Right now. Nothing lasts forever. Open it up. Show me what's inside. <laughs> Emerge! <laughs> oh. Oh, the fun is over! Black fly! And step! Break a leg! I'm going in! Come on out. Right here.
All yours, should you have any use for them. Kamisato of Suyu. Let's light it up. Everybody stand back. Show them what a nuisance. Emerge. Be still.
Yes! That's it! It's just like that. Just as strange, just as upside down, and just as spooky. In which case, maybe whatever's going on in the chasm really is connected to the Abyss Order. Oh, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Oh? oh? Hmm. The feeling is mutual. I certainly hadn't expected to meet you here either. Long time no see, Dane. Wait, but how did you suddenly end up here in the chasm? The chasm? So we're in the depths of the chasm, are we? Interesting. This is one place where I have never set foot before. I understand how you must feel. Last time we met suddenly and parted hastily. Now our paths cross again. Fate, it seems, owes you an explanation. That much should be self-explanatory. I came upon the trail of another Abyss Herald recently and began pursuing it. Unfortunately, I got as far as cornering him before he resorted to the same trick that they all do. I was hot on his heels when I followed him through the portal, but as usual, it was to no avail. It took me to the wrong place. Correct. Based on my recent experiences, I can only conclude that the Abyss's portals are not simply pathways from point A to point B, but gateways to an entire network. Where they emerge on the other side is their choice. It can be anywhere within the network. Sounds kinda similar to how teleport waypoints work. In short, Though I was right behind your twin last time when I entered that portal, the next moment that I realized where I was, I was all alone, back in the ruins known as Storm Terror's Lair. Oh yeah, about that! Whatever happened to the Eye of the First Field Tiller? It's in a safe place. You can be sure that I will learn the truth of the Loom of Fate operation sooner than it could ever fall into the Abyss Order's hands. So that title stuck in your memory. I by no means went out of my way to conceal it from you. It once stood for the glory of Kanria, but now it is but a cruel joke. My curse to bear. Twilight Sword was my title as Captain of the Royal Guards, when I witnessed the destruction of my entire homeland firsthand. I believe my reluctance to raise it in conversation is quite justified. Sounds like your brother was right. We were travel partners. We both partook in a painful journey of searching for our fate. But regrettably, we did not make it to the journey's end together. Before you continue questioning me, I ought to warn you. If my suspicions regarding the portal network are correct, then the fact that there is a portal leading here tells us that the Abyss Order has their eyes on this location. You mean, the Abyss Order is plotting something here? Actually, Paimon and the Traveler suspected that too! I mean that it's highly likely that even as we speak, the Abyss Order is watching our every move. <sighs> Don't say that! You're giving Paimon goosebumps! <laughs> A wise choice. Hmm. There appears to be light from a fire coming from near that rocky wall. Let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, so you collect these? Wester. In fact, hold on. You still haven't told me what you're doing here. I doubt that most travelers would have any reason to venture down this way. We took a commission from the Adventurers Guild to investigate the chasm. Apparently a whole load of hilly churls have been gathering here, and the requester wants to know why. And now it looks like we finally found our first clue. Do you want the answer? As it happens, I do. It's understandable that you did not perceive anything unusual. What makes this place so strange is that the environment here weakens the effect of the curse. The curse? Oh, Paima remembers! Last time you guys were saying that Conria's people were cursed to immortality or something. For centuries. I have suffered daily from the curse that was laid upon me. But here, I suddenly feel a small amount of relief from this suffering. And right here, right now, I can feel my body sending a strong message to me. It is telling me, stay. So, this place weakens the curse? That's pretty incredible. But how? That I shall need to investigate. But to the best of my knowledge, the Abyss Order does not have the technology to achieve this. Indeed. Do you know why hilly churls wear masks? It's to hide their appearance, lest they catch sight of their reflection in a body of water. Compared to how they remember themselves, it is a terrible sight to behold. One that causes them great despair. The curse of immortality denies death to those afflicted with it. And yet, it does not truly mean that they will never die. So, you mean, there's a way to undo it? <sighs> no. I mean that the body and soul will continue to be eroded until they are virtually non-existent. Even if death is not the form that this erosion takes. When the Hillichurls realize that the end is nigh for them, it seems their instinct is to seek out a calm and dark corner of the world in which to finally say goodbye to the centuries of suffering they have endured. And of all the places they could lay down to rest, one that can ease the effects of their curse would surely be their first choice. Wow. That's so... Conversation's over. Brace yourselves. We're under attack. Be still. The devil's back. Strike is one. Show them right now. 
Once belonged to the Royal Guard of Kanria. Wait a second. Royal Guard? So, they used to be your troops? Yes, they were. But now, the curse engulfs them, and they fight with none of the honor they once had. Because they've become pawns of the Abyss now? Let's continue on. Seems we missed one. Wait, stand down. There's something different about this one. It's disappeared. What the heck? What was going on with that one? Was it trying to say something? How is this possible? How could he have retained self-awareness for 500 years without... it? But more importantly... Why did he seem so familiar? That would be a miraculous outcome indeed for a cataclysm that brought total doom and destruction. Hmm. Or perhaps it was just a coincidence. We should press onward to the city. or something around here, right? Traveler, looks like it's time to get into ruin exploring mode! Don't waste your time. Huh? Kanria's technology, abyssal power. Two things I couldn't be more familiar with. <laughs> They're just cheap tricks to me. So the Abyss Order really is trying to hide something here, right? Hmm. Dan seems like he really understands what's going on here. No wonder the Abyss Order doesn't want him around. Not necessarily. The closer we draw, the more I am inclined to conclude that these ruins belong to a more ancient civilization still. The Abyss Order simply got to them before anyone else. Even older than Kanri? Paimon can't even imagine back that far. That said, the architecture here does somewhat resemble that of Kanria. At least, it would if it were the other way up. Let's head toward the light over there. Mind your footing on the way ahead. It's a long way down. We are likely drawing near to whatever the Abyss Order is trying to hide. Let's take them out first. Emerge! Right here! Nothing lasts forever. Uh -uh. Let's light it up! Teamwork is strict! Cascade! Mind the damage! Seem like they're hiding something behind them. 
Hold on. I think they... Serpent Knights have nothing to do with the Abyss Order's secret. Huh. I should have guessed. So, what exactly is going on with these Hilly Churls? As I said, for these Hilly Churls, the end is nigh. They have grown old and fearful of the light, even become one with the darkness. And yet the curse continues to corrode them. to know why they were gathered here guarding the hilly churls, don't you? It's because as far as the Black Serpent Knights are concerned, they're simply doing their duty. The one who ordered them to retreat just now, I suddenly recognized him. I knew him as a young man, an elite in the Royal Guard of old. His name is Halfdan. So, he's from 500 years ago too? To this day, I still remember the final orders I, the Twilight Sword, gave to Halfdan on the day of disaster in Kanria, before I made haste back to the palace. Inform all Black Serpent Knights to protect the people of Kanria at all costs, because we, of course, were royal guards. But this would mean nothing in the events that followed. Royals, gentry, common folk, these identities made no difference. Against the might of the gods, the only identity that mattered was being from Kanria. These black serpent knights have lost their intellect, but perhaps, in whatever remains of their minds, they are still protecting the people of Kanria. If you see these ruins as Kanria in the throes of disaster, and these hilly churls as the people crying for help, then suddenly, I can make sense of what I'm hearing. Their growls are less of a threat and more of a warning. Then what are they saying? Though it is barely discernible, I can just about make it out. They keep repeating a word from the old language of Kanria. Run. Even I have to admit, the fact their will is strong enough to survive 500 years of erosion. It is nothing short of a miracle, born from hopelessness. Oh, so Paimon had them all wrong. It doesn't matter. Even I took them for enemies for a moment. Let's keep heading toward the light at the top. I believe the Black Serpent Knights will no longer try to stop us. Sure enough, we aren't seeing any more Black Serpent Knights. Guess that half 
Captain Guy really did recognize Captain Dean, huh? Oh, so you collect these? <laughs> 